out the name of Jesus in this place. Lord, we pray from the very onset. Come, Holy Spirit, come and dwell in this place. Come and move amongst your people today, we ask. Lord, we pray that everything we do, we bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus. Lead and guide us in everything that is said and done. We pray, we ask this in the mighty and precious name. Lord, I pray that we've come with an expectant heart, that we'll leave any distractions at the door, and we'll all press in to worship you, our Lord and Saviour today. Lord, we ask this in your mighty and precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's continue with our worship here as we sing this song, Praise the Lord Evermore.
moment. Um, I'm just going to bring this on Leanne. Will you just bring us an update of Limitless this week? What happened? Um, as we just have we'll just bring some announcements and then we'll hand over to Pastor. Right. Oh, yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, so again, we have the second um, week of our Limitless Whistle. Uh, we have 22 returners as well as our own young people, and we still had another one uh, new person. We, and we do know there was a few that could come, wanted to come, but couldn't for illness and whatever. So it was really, really encouraging. Amen. And I've heard from um, one parent that I was out with last night that said that their son is absolutely loving it, and that he actually come home and said that, um, you know, he really feels this is the way he's gonna get to know God. Amen. And I was like, well, that's, all this, you know, that's what it's about, and that's amazing. So, Yes, right, that means it's no good. Well, good to see you all, folks. Praise God. Uh, it's a very special weekend for um, one particular young lady. I think she's called Jenny. <laughs> Celebrating 40th birthday. You don't know, you're only 25. And uh, also, your wedding anniversary because you got married on your birthday. I remember that day very, very well, don't I? Praise God. So, we're going to like to give you a nice. Okay, Flowers, because it's your anniversary there. So we're going to do something right. Praise the Lord. Just to wish you well and so on. <laughs> Alright, God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. <laughs> Alright, uh, these wonderful birthdays come round so quick, don't they? Oh my goodness. I swap you, Jenny, any day. But I don't think about the trade that one up while you're lying. <laughs> Praise God. Move on quickly. As I say, uh, just to, uh, I did put a post out on the church app yesterday that we got some good news to, to bring to you all. And I know most of you know what that's, that's about, but we didn't sort of know who and when and what have you. Things have moved so very rapidly in this last week. It's incredible. Things are just dropping into place. It's quite amazing. So that's wonderful. But uh, we do have a new pastor coming. It's so we can all shout hooray. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, his name is Tom, and his dear wife is Lauren Skelton, and uh, they have been joined, of course, have two children, Amy 12 and Ben 10, and uh, they have, I think, an older daughter in university uh, as well, but um, she'll be staying there, of course, at the moment. But uh, like I say, uh, people that love people, and uh, very much so, of course, I might add, and that they are the people person, as the expression goes. Uh, actually, as for when, um, that'll happen. It's just all a little bit subject. They need somewhere to live. And they're coming from Aberdeen, Scotland. So it's, it's a long way. And uh, to find somewhere to live here in this area. But things are moving in that area quite rapidly. And uh, we thank God for that. So we'll know a little bit more about when and when the time comes. And we'll get that date fixed, of course. Praise God. But I want to just add one thing. I'm not going to go into that now. But I'm of old, the old school, the expression goes, I like every major decision that I've in my life would have the church be confirmed through the word of God. And that's the way I was brought up. That's the way God's always spoken into my life and spoke led me in this church in the last 37 years now. And um, I said, Lord, I need really confirmation. So something like three weeks ago, and this whole come up out there, brother, okay, uh, came on the horizon, as you might say. Lord, give me very graphic details about that. And I'll share that with you another time, but that's not the time perhaps now to just to do that. But uh, just to, to be encouraged, God is in this, and that's what's important. Sometimes we're only stewards of what's placed in our hands for a set time. You see, it's not my church, it's His. He's the head, hallelujah, and we just need to move in what He wants to do by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Anyway, it's lovely to move from this now. Our dear brother Paul is here today to share, and he's been such a great asset to us and a great help and encouragement to Jan and I and the leadership uh, regarding this. And uh, so we look forward to hearing you, Paul. Uh, he was due to come on a couple of other occasions, but because of pressures of commitments, it was just not possible and everything else. But he has spoken for us on, um, online a couple, two or three times now, yeah. I think he has. So we appreciate that. So we'll be sharing uh, a little bit later on and we look forward to that. I'm going to move on very rapidly, but just one last thing. If we work for the days, we should have had them last week, some of you who didn't take them. They're on the desk. Please avail yourself. Come on. Thank you. All right. Let's continue with our worship now and uh, we'll sing this song that casts my mind to Calvary. And it, uh, it just paints this picture, doesn't it, of our Lord and Saviour on the cross. And the price he paid for each and every one of us. 
So let's just worship with this song. We invite you to stand with us. Let's just really press in with worship today. And uh, it says about, you know, bringing a sacrifice of praise. That's not just, uh, I'm just in church, I'm going to sing along. The sacrifice is something that you bring sacrificially. Um, and so let's just do that in our worship now. So should we stand together? Yes, amen. Yeah. 
heard an amazing story from Leanne this morning about the young people. Oh. A beautiful good news story about that boy yeah. saying he thinks that this is the way he's going to get to know God. Yeah. That is a good news story. Yeah. And he is. Whoever he is, we need to be praying for him. That is exactly what will happen. Yeah. Um, to have 22 young people, fantastic. You've got a great worship team, you've got yes. great youth work developing there. There's lots of great things about you and just look at who you're sitting next to on that road today. I mean, you can't get anybody better than the person next to you. <laughs> Can we? Okay. I mean, I know, I know you probably prefer to sit with somebody else, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, but but um, in all the stories of what God has done uh, in this church in the past, do you want to make new stories? Amen. Yes, certainly. Because the greatest honour you can give Malcolm and Jan is to, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, create new stories. I pastored a church for 17 years and I left it in 2013 to become a missions director for Elam and we are delighted that you are with us in partnership in Elam Network. We just love you um, very, very much. But I, I became a missions director in the last four years of being a regional leader. But I left my church in the north in 2013 and over 17 years God had built a church of up to 200 people from 30. I went back to it a couple of weeks ago and there's 40. The greatest honour that you can give Malcolm and Jack is to keep moving forward in the gospel, is to keep praying and believing for new news of God, and to believe that the best is yet to come, that everything in the past is an indicator that God is a God who moves in every generation. So if you're praying, if you're a prayer, you, you pray even harder, and more and longer. If you are out there working with either young people, children, or whatever you're doing, if you're even in your neighborhood and you're just talking about this lovely church, you do it even, even more. Because you want your church to prosper. Amen. Yes, that's right. So that Mark and Jan can look back and see that all what they've given to God in this church has not come to nothing. So it's, it's continuing. Amen. Yes. Is everybody agreeing with me? Yes. 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 Yeah? Yes. And that's my prayer for you. So I want to speak into a little bit of that about a new season Amen. this morning. Um, but it would be uh, just, I, 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 I like to honor people and I just like, it was nice to see uh, a lady, has she got the flowers in Bonhoeffer? Yeah, she had to take a family to the airport. Oh, she went to the airport? They got to the Bonhoeffer, yeah, all the whole Oh, wow, yeah, she had to leave, okay. So I don't think you got the wrong flowers in Bonhoeffer. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's nice to honour, and I just want to honour Malcolm and John and who they are and what they've done. So here's um, uh, my my Bible passage. If you've got your Bible, it's, it's, um, it's Romans chapter 1. It's a really, really long passage. Um, tongue in cheek. Have you got it, Romans chapter one? Yeah. It, it's so long that I didn't. It's so the passage is so long that I didn't read my Bible either. Um, it says this: Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus. And that's what I want to speak to you about. Okay. You see, Paul. It wasn't his name. No. 
that wasn't his name. We know that. Born a Jew, Pharisee, Saul, met Christ in a resurrection appearance on the Damascus Road, becomes a new first generation Christian follower of Christ. Spends some time away and then joins the church. And his first missionary journey he sent out to an island called Cyprus. Saul arrives on this island. He goes to the Jewish synagogues as Saul. And he preaches and teaches the gospel to the Jews as Saul. But something happened on that island. And the story is this, and you don't need to turn to it, but it is in Acts, and Luke writes it, it's in Acts 13, but it's, here's the story, that on the island is a Roman governor, uh, this Roman commander who is responsible for Roman rule on Cyprus, his name is Sergius Paulus, Paul, and he has a servant, uh, an attendant, called Bar Jesus, son of Jesus. You'd have thought with that name, he'd have been a disciple of Jesus. But he was a con man. Maybe he was. Maybe that wasn't that wasn't his name. His name was Elymas, but he he used the title. Maybe he used the title to get more business because he was a sorcerer. And he got in the way of Saul trying to lead Sergius Paulus to, to Christ. Saul managed it and brought Paulus to the Lord and into the faith and supernaturally proclaimed blindness upon this sorcerer. And it's in that context that something happens. His mate. Luke. They have a conversation, we don't know what it is, but we are guessing that there is a, a turning point in Saul when he is not ditching the Jews. His, his heart is always to reach the Jews, but it begin, there begins a move towards the Gentile world. There's a shift in mission. There is a new season for Saul. And he says to his mate Luke, well, I don't know what he says, but his mate begins to write Paul from that moment on. And the reason is because if he's going to reach the Gentile world and he goes in with a Jewish name, offence, barrier, blockage, even before he opens his mouth, here comes a Jew. In order to connect, in order for the gospel that's in his heart to, to have freedom, they decide that I'll use the Latin name of my name Saul. From now on, I'll be called Paul. God didn't change his name. God didn't ask Saul to change. God, this was not an Old Testament moment like, you are Abraham. Now you'll be called Abraham. <laughs> you are Sarah. Now you'll be called Sarah. You know those moments you're thinking, whoa, okay, spelling's different. This is God. God's not coming to Saul and saying, I want to bring a change to your life. It's Saul and Luke who decide to make the change. 
What are you working on? Are you the finished product? Ask if you're married, ask your wife if she thinks you're the finished product. <laughs> and she'll give you the answer. <laughs> but, when, but I wonder if God is waiting for you to make some change. Are you willing to change? <coughs> what is there about you for the sake of the gospel? For the sake of mission and the growth of the church and the glory of God, what is it? Are you nice to be around? Anybody had a coffee with somebody and you're thinking, oh, this is the last coffee I'm having with you. <laughs> you know, they, some people think grumbling is a gift, don't they? <laughs> it's one of my gifts. I'm baptizing the Spirit gave me the gift of grumbling. <laughs> some people are like that, don't they? And you come away from the coffin and you feel absolutely drained. <laughs> you know, I'm never going to get that out of that. And some people just bring life to you. They're just a joy to be with. I find as I've got older, you know, now that I'm approaching 40, <laughs> just keep you awake, just keep you awake. <laughs> Don't be unkind, but I like But as I'm getting older, I realize that the changes that I had to make when I was 20, and not the changes today. We don't like change. Have you ever looked in the mirror and, and decided that you don't like change? <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? God, why? What is wrong with my mirror? <laughs> yeah. We don't like change. Last, last, last April, um, I'd, I'd gone through three months of, of I was tired, I was, uh, I married, never married a nurse, <laughs> anyway, she's on duty today, she can't come, but she said, I know what's wrong with you, I didn't listen, and uh, so anyway, uh, I took a sugar reading, and uh, then I went to the doctors, and the doctor said, yeah, you should be in a coma, um, so, <laughs> So I was thankful that I wasn't. <laughs> and uh, so he said, you'll never reverse this now, you're, you're a diabetic. Um, so from April to whenever somebody says to me, you'll never do it. Uh, that's a little bit of a challenge. So from April through till November, that next six months, um, I just began to reverse that. Yeah. Eating cardboard, really. <laughs> <laughs> and I lost a lot of weight. I realized that I had to make some change. God wasn't going to do it. Yeah. I had to do it. Yes. I've buried people too soon because they wouldn't make the change. Churches have declined in number because the leaders would not be prepared to make the change or the members would not allow for change. Marriages have broken up. Families have split apart because they're not willing to change. Change is essential for all our lives. And as I get older in my disciple with Jesus, discipleship with Jesus, I'm needing people around me to say to me, Paul, oh, this is what you need to be working on now. I'm needing the Holy Spirit to convict me now in ways that 
20 years ago he wasn't doing it. I'm asking you a question. Saul was willing to change for the gospel. Are you? Are you, are, you, are you willing to, even this morning, say, God, I, I say yes. I, I will make that change. I, I, I'll, I'll be committed to making that change. Now, how did that happen? Well, when he starts writing this letter to people that he never met, he, he could have started it in many different ways. But he says, Paul a servant. And it reveals something about what was taking place in his life. In, in our English trans translations, we have the word servant. And it's true that the, the word doulos can be understood by this word servant. The reason why the translators over the last few centuries have used the word servant is because of all of the implications of what it would mean to use the word slave. Because of the slave trade of the 17th, 18th century, and even today, with quite rightly so, our approach to anti-slavery, that there is this shyness and this pulling away from this word because it can be misunderstood. But actually the word doulos, that's exactly what it means. It does mean slave. In fact, in the Jewish scriptures in the Old Testament, in, uh, just after God had rescued the slaves, his people, from Egypt, through the Exodus. He then gave them Ten Commandments. And then the remaining chapters and chapters and chapters is God delving into his commandments and starting to unpack them. And one of the very first things he does is speak to them about slavery. You find it in Exodus 15, Deuteronomy 15. And what he orchestrates for is he orchestrates freedom into the place of slavery so that even at the time of, of Saul um, within Rome, every, and, and, and Rome that he was writing to the churches in Rome, every seven years slaves would be freed. And they had the opportunity, if they liked their master, to come back to their master and to be paid for the work and they were called then a bond slave. Do us, Paul is saying, I am a slave. That's who I am. And I'm writing to you today, I'm a slave of Christ Jesus. I'm a slave. And in those Jewish scriptures, we have an understanding of what it means to be a person who comes back to the master to say, I want to be a slave to you. I, I, uh, I'm free, but I, I come back to you because I want to give my life to you. And you might think of a song when I tell you this. And what they do is that the master will take that slave to the door frame with an oar and pierce their ear to the door frame and put the image of maybe his name, the household name, sort of some logo into the ear. You belong to me. Pierce my ear, the Lamb of God. Old song, don't write on my back anymore. <laughs> The piercing my ear means I become the slave to the master that I am freed from, but I choose to belong to. 
And this word pierced reminds us of the sufferings of Christ, but it, it feels painful. Anybody have their ears pierced? Any men? Yeah. One? Any women? Yeah. Dirt? No. Dirt. A little bit. No. Well, you're tough for me. <laughs> See, the reason why I have never had my ears pierced, I've got a low pain threshold. <laughs> and isn't that, if I get a splinter, I think, this is why marrying the nurse was the wrong decision. So I thought, what's the matter with you? So I've got a splinter, it's nothing. Um, <laughs> the pain, the pain. Paul would understand in his life serving Jesus what it is. In fact, he would write on one occasion, I bear, in the letter of Galatians, I, I bear in my body the sufferings of Christ. There's, a, there's an old missionary called Richard Wormbrand, serving in, in the communist countries, Romania, Romanian minister. He spent 20 years in the communist prison. He had uh, mistreated for being a Christian. Put in, a, in a frozen compartments. When he died, his body, his, his body was marked. Had, his body had been so mutilated, he carried he carried the marks of suffering for Christ. You and I may not be like that, but through our Christian experience, hurts and pains, <coughs> suffering, disappointments, there are, there, are, there are heartaches that people don't see, but they're underneath the skin. And we bear the marks. But when you enter into a new season, there's no new season without pain. And the change that, that I talk about and say, well, are you willing to change? It will hurt you. None of us mind change when it's, we can see, oh yeah, it's going to be great, this. It's about time he changed. And you might be sitting next to someone thinking, I hope they're listening. <laughs> but if you want to move into a new season, it will involve change. And that would be painful. But it's interesting what they do. They, the mask takes them to the door frame and leaves the blood on the door frame, which is the Exodus story of the Passover, the blood on the door frame. Let me ask you, who is the door? Who came and said, I am the door? His name is Jesus. He is the portal into a new season. He is the pathway through through him. He takes you into a new season. And what does he pierce? He pierces your ear, the place where you can hear the voice of God, where he is speaking into your life. There is no new season without the pain of change. And what is the model? What? Who is the influencer? Where is Saul modeling all of this on? Christ Jesus. We sung about him today. Name above all names. Here we are with two names put together, a divine name and a human name. Christ, Son of God, Messiah, human name, ordinary, common name, Jesus. Christ Jesus. Christ, the divine title where there is no other name. We sung it this morning. There is no other name. He is high. To, right now, right now, this morning times, we are sitting here in this lovely church building, there in the throne of God, holy, holy, 
holy is the Lord God Almighty, Amen. who was and is and is to come. Yeah. And everyone's going, wow. And then they're repeating, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Constantly, night and day, day and night, constantly worshipping around the throne of heaven, the name of God, eternity, forever and ever. Christ, God, Father, Son, Spirit, lifting up the name above all names, supreme. And, and Paul knew this, that he is supreme. There's no one higher than him. He is pre-existent before all things, before anything came into place. He is, he was, and he will forever be. And that Christ has made everything, Christ sustains everything, Christ is in all and holds it all together. He has your life, he will never let you go, he never drops you, he never turns his back on you, he knows you even before the day that you were born, all the days are ordained. He's life and death, death and life. If we live, we, we walk with Christ, if we die, we reign with Christ. Christ is over everything. There is no one greater than Christ. That's his inspiration. The honor to that name, anointed one, Messiah. I uh, carry around, I'm, I'm not a painter. But and I don't know much, but I carry around about three, four paintings that I know the story of. And there's one story that I know of, of Christ. And you know the painting of the Lord's Supper and Jesus in the middle of the disciples. And Leonardo da Vinci painted this in 1498. He sat back and he, after he finished it, he invited his friend to come and have a look at it. His friend was amazed. His friend said, wow, what a great painting. So what do you like best about this? What I love about this painting is that the cup. The cup in the hands of Jesus. Wow, you've done that really well. That cup is the highlight of me. And da Vinci said, please go. And after he left, he painted the cup out of the painting because he said nothing so you don't see the cup you just see the hand of Jesus he said nothing was to track from Jesus there are times in our life we need to reorganize and reorientate ourselves so that we live underneath the greatest type that ever, 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 ever will be. For Saul to change his name is nothing compared to Christ. And what did Christ do? And this is the key. And our opening line this morning says, you sang the opening line this morning. I lay my life down. That's the first thing you sang this morning. I lay my life down. And I thought that confirms what I'm saying this morning. See, Christ, who's worshipped around the throne constantly every moment, Paul would write later and say he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made himself nothing yes. taking the very nature of a slave yes. he did not consider equality with God something to hold on to Christ when he came in the form of human to demonstrate to us and to bring salvation to us, the world, 
lay down his life, his titles, no entitlement. There is no room for entitlement in the body of Christ when the captain of the ship, the master of our lives, the Lord of Lords, lay down every title for the sins of the for to save our lives. It's funny in church, isn't it? I don't know, I don't know this church. You know, you may be perfect, so forgive me. <laughs> but I was born in church. My parents are ministers and seen a lot of stuff. And I've seen a lot of entitlement. And it comes in many different ways. <clears throat> I remember, I remember one, I only had two churches. My first church, we bought new chairs. And I, th I thought we were hitting on a really great idea. Let's all buy a chair. The worst thing ever. I mean, we got the chairs, but this thing, we'll all buy the chair. I didn't realise that that would translate into, I'm buying my chair. Until the moment when a visitor came and sat in. <laughs> Mrs. Blabamel's chair. And she was, I saw her standing up, hovering over the visitor. And she actually said, You're sitting in my chair. And I said to Mrs. Blabbermouth, So you're standing for the rest of the service with only no chairs. I don't know if you have that. But it's a true story. But it's a ridiculous story of how sometimes we as followers of Christ lose perspective on what it means to be a disciple. And we sing, I lay my life down. And one thing I know about this church and the new season that we're going into, it will mean every single one of you Every single one of you are going to need to do exactly that. You're going to need to lay your life down. And maybe this morning that's what God is waiting for you. I don't know how old you were when you first came to the Lord. And I don't know how old you are now. Twenty-one. Oh, <laughs> I can hear a lot of things. <laughs> but I do know that as we journey with him, he's going to ask you, will you, will you lay your life down like me? And he's waiting to see if you will bring change into your life. What do you need to do to bring somebody to church? What do you need to do to do an act of kindness to somebody? What, what change will you bring? Will you say to the Lord this morning, pierce my ear, I want to hear you, I want you to take me into a new season, fresh, new season with you, and I lay my life down. Shall we pray for that right yeah. yeah. Who believes with me that God is here right now? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, presence of God in this place this morning. Thank you. We just respond to you this morning. It's been clear from the outset this morning.
that you have been speaking through the words that we've been singing. Through my message this morning. And I ask that for my friends, for every man and woman in this service today, those at home, that they may make a decision to bring one change into their life today. And they may come before you and say, I want to serve you, I want to commit to being so close to you. Will you pierce my ear, Lamb of God? Will you pierce me to the door frame? Will, will you take me into a new season? Will you use me? And here it is. Just as you, Christ, laid your life down as Jesus, I choose today to lay my life before you. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Before we launch into anything, as we close the service, Take a moment. Can you begin to speak with the Lord yourself?
soldiers who are in Manchester who invite you to uh, just to step out to um, be obedient even right now. Maybe God is speaking to you, He's got something on your heart, or is challenging you even about something in your life. And just take this opportunity now just to step out and just receive from Him today. For you and for the gospel, for Amen, the lost, yes. for this world, 
Let this church burn with a fire of intensity, a desire for Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit descend and burn within our hearts. Let fire fall within our hearts and minds for Jesus Christ. We don't need a blessing to feel good. We have you right now. Amen. But we need your power and we need your presence and we need miracles. Amen. We need boldness and courage. Every man and every woman to be saturated with the Spirit of God. Jesus. <coughs> Every generation, Jesus. eldest to the youngest, yes, Lord. Yes. be glorified in this your church in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We're just going to close the service now with a song called Guard You. As we go out right this week, we can sing those words knowing that our God goes before us, He's yes. there beside us. We're also going to take the time to also take an offering for God. Ties and gifts there, and, and bring those into the into God's house so that we can uh, minister to those around and about us as well. So let's just close with some of God.
into our into our workplace, into Amen. our communities, yeah. into our surrounding areas. May we have the opportunity this week to share Jesus with somebody that we come into contact with. Lord, we pray that you would just lead and guide us, Lord, where you would have us to go, the steps that we would tread this very week. Lord, we pray blessing upon each and every family represented here and for Paul as well. We've been travelling a safe journey back home. Lord, we thank you for his ministry with us today. Lord, we ask this in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Have a great week, everybody. We'll carry on and have refreshments in the room next door, but we'll see you next week. Have a great week.